Hey everyone, today I'm going to be sharing five bird photography tips for beginners. So today I've come to RSPB Oldmoor, which is in South Yorkshire, quite near to where I live. I brought the D7500 as well as the Sigma 150 to 600 mm lens, and I'm just going to see what birds I can find. I'm going to get into the hides, take some shots, and share some tips along the way for beginners, which I wish I'd known when I first started out. Tip number one, get yourself a telephoto lens. You need to get as close as you can to the birds without scaring them away, and the longer the lens that you can get, the better. This is the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeters. It is really big and heavy, and it's quite expensive. On the D7500 body, it's actually multiplied at the long end, instead of being 600 millimeter, on this body it's actually 950, because it's times by 1.5 on a crop sensor body. But you don't have to have something as big and heavy as this. You can also use something like the Nikon 70 to 300 mm DX lens. That's really light, but on the D7500 body, that's up to 450 mm. So that's more than enough for a beginner to get close enough to the birds and get a good shot. But also bear in mind that big lenses like this, unless you spend a lot, a lot of money, tend to have quite slow apertures. The Sigma, for example, is 5 to 6.3. So you're going to have to come out in bright daylight in order to get a fast enough shutter speed to capture your birds. Tip number two, keep your shutter speed nice and high. It's really important with birds. Even if you're taking a picture of a stationary bird, at any point they can just fly off. So you need a good fast shutter speed so that you're gonna capture those and not get a blurred bird instead. You can get a good shutter speed by using shutter priority mode. So once you've set your camera into shutter priority mode, set it up to around about a thousand, and then that way it'll automatically adjust your aperture to compensate and make sure that you've got enough light getting into the camera while maintaining your shutter speed of a thousandth per second. Tip number three, choose the right autofocus mode for your subject. So if it's a stationary subject, on a Nikon camera that's AFS. If it's moving, you'll be using AFC. That's continuous autofocus, so whenever you're holding your finger halfway down on the shutter button, that'll be continually autofocusing as the subject moves, and that'll give you a much better chance of making sure it's in focus as it moves. If you're changing a lot between subjects, stationary and moving, then it's good to have a quick button that you can use on the camera. On the D7500, there's a dedicated button on the side here where you can swap between modes. But on my Z7, I've assigned one of the function buttons at the front so that I can use that to quickly swap between the two. Once you've chosen your focus mode, then choose your focus area mode. This will depend on what camera you're using. But on the Nikons, you can choose things like dynamic areas, which will automatically focus on what the camera deems as the best point of focus in the frame. Or you can choose 9 point, 21 point, 51, for example, and that will determine how the camera selects the focus point for autofocus. In general, you want to select the fewest points that you can. So 9 points would be better than 21, and 21 would be better than 51. But there are times when your subject's going to be really erratic, and it's going to be moving around, and it'll move outside of those points so you'll have to choose more. Generally, I'll be using between nine and 21, but occasionally I'll go up to 51. It all depends on your subject, really.
Step number four, don't be afraid to put your ISO up higher if you need to. We're taught as photographers to keep our ISO as low as possible, and that's true. Whenever you can, keep it as low as you can because you'll get better image quality. However, with bird photography, you really need to keep your shutter speed up nice and high. And a lot of the time, you're not gonna be able to do that unless you put your ISO up. Quite often, I'll be using high ISOs anywhere from 1,000 all the way up to 6,400 sometimes. And I can still get really good results all the way up at that level. Tip number five, set your camera's drive mode to its highest burst rate. That'll mean that whenever you press the shutter button, instead of just taking one shot, it'll take a succession of shots. And that way you've got much better chance of getting the bird in focus. As it flies away or it's moving through the sky, you can get a number of shots as it's flying. And at least one of those hopefully will be good. All right, so it's been a good few hours now. Gonna wrap up, get back, see what's on the SD card. Hopefully there's some good shots there, so I'll see you back there. So I know these tips won't be applicable to everybody, but if you are just starting out with bird photography, I hope that they've helped. They were certainly the type of things that helped me out when I was first starting. If you happen to live nearby RSPB Old Moor and you haven't been before, I can certainly recommend going. It's a great place to go, especially if you like bird photography. There are loads of hides and there's some great birds there. I've got loads of shots of egrets, herons, snipes, lapwings, and there are even some kingfishers and barn owls there I believe. I didn't see them on the day, but if you manage to spot those that'd be great. And if you don't live nearby, then don't worry, the RSPB have got loads of locations up and down the country, so more than likely there's going to be a location near to you. So I really recommend going if you like bird photography. I tried a couple of new things out today. One of those was the Sigma TC1401 teleconverter. This basically extends the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens by another 1.4 times. So it just allows me to get even closer to the birds. It does reduce the maximum aperture you can use. I think at the long end, it's something like F8 or F9. So to compensate for that narrow aperture and to maintain your shutter speed, you've really got to get your ISO nice and high. So to help out with that, the other thing that I tried out was DxO's Pure Raw software. And that's basically a software which will pre-treat your raw files before you put them into something like Lightroom. Apparently it's got some sophisticated algorithms and things which will reduce the noise. And supposedly that's better than using the tools within something like Lightroom itself. I'm not 100% sure yet. I think I've got some good results with it, but I'd be interested to know what you think. I've not used it on all of the shots in the video, but I have used it on some of them. So if you think you can tell which shots I've used the software on, then please leave a comment below. So that's it for this video. 
If you found the tips useful, then please give the video a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel and would like to subscribe, then click down here on the big red button or over here on my face. And that way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. UK time. I think next week I'm going to be doing macro, so if you like that, then join me for that. And until then, thanks a lot everyone, and bye for now.